played under Eric Ten Hag at Ajax, Ryan. Uh, look, we're just talking about Manchester United. Um, what was he like as a manager? Um, he was very, he was very direct. He was very demanding. He knew uh, what he wanted uh, from his players on each positions, and um, we were specifically training, training on on those, you know, um, tactics and and, and uh, strategies, um, how he wanted to implement it. And um, yeah, you know, if if he felt like you were lacking, you know, he made it known. Um, so, you know, as a player, I feel like. Um, it was even though it was very demanding. Um, there were no misunderstandings, you know. I feel sometimes managers explain something in meetings, and then it's still kind of like, you know, gray area. And then afterwards they say, "Oh, I meant this and I meant that." But with with uh, Ten Hag, it's really uh, straightforward. Well, you know, when he signed Waghorse at uh, Old Trafford, people were wondering why he's done that. Do you think he was doing it to show the rest of the front players this is how you work? Obviously, Waghorse is probably. Being honest, he's probably not good enough to play for Man United regularly. But his right. attitude—I thought his attitude was spot on. And yeah, I don't know whether he was just trying to show the rest of them, Martial and Anthony, this is how you work. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I mean, I do know that Weghorst uh, is known for for having that mentality. He's been praised also, you know, uh, back home in in Holland. Um, that's also one of the main reasons why he's playing national team. Um, he's able to always create and, and make something in front of the goal and, and stir st- uh, stir stuff up. Um, but again, I don't know if that would be the main reason. Um, you know, uh, I, I imagine uh, at that moment he came as replacement from Ronaldo, which is, of course, a big gap to fill. Um, but yeah, maybe at that particular moment, um, maybe not many players wanted to come to United. So he, he was out of options. And then I think um, if I have to think realistically, he maybe chose for an option that he know who would understand him uh, uh, quick mm-hmm. as there was time. And, and that could be, you know, a Dutch player in this particular case. And it was uh, Weghorst. Yeah, just on Ten Hag rise, a huge pressure being a manager of Manchester United. Obviously, you've been under him. You know what he's like as a character. Do you think he can handle it? Yeah, he can. He can. Um, if I if I remember back in Ajax, you know, his first season was also not uh, really so spot on. And uh, there was uh, immense pressure. And then, uh, you know, from the second season on forward, slowly they, they started to believe and see the, the shape on, on how he had it in his head. Um, so, you know, he, he has these experiences uh, being under pressure. Um, yeah, the question is, uh, can he execute it this year? Uh, can he finally have the players that he wants? And and, and can they execute how, how, how he wants to play? Mm. Uh, your former teammate, uh, Mitrovic, when he was at Fulham, he, he's trying to force a move to Saudi side Al-Hilal, uh, reportedly. Uh, Raj, what do you make of this? Look, you're a player. You're playing now. You're fit. You know, you, you, you're playing out in Turkey. But, you know... If you put yourself in Mitrovic's shoes or any player's shoes right now with moves to Saudi, these deals are hard to turn down, right? The money. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, they're definitely hard to turn down. Um, However, I do still feel like, you know, uh, especially if you have had a good relationship with your club, you know, they've been treating you well. uh, You've been obviously important for the club. I do feel like, you know, both parties have to try and, and, and come out of it in a good way. Um, of course, it's, um, I think, sad to read that, um, you know, uh, Mitrovic and, and Fulham are falling out now over a, a move, a potential move. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, um, I do understand why why Mitrovic want to go, of course. Mm. At, at some point, uh, they've obviously put an offer in for him and Mitrovic has said, why are you asking for more? Why are you asking for more money? And if, you, if, if you're going to stop me going... I'm not going to turn up for training. Mm. I mean, mm. I, he, he can't do that, surely. No, yeah, th- th- that's that's one of those things. I mean, um, I feel like at all times you have to try and stay professional and and try to come out of it together. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's uh, yeah. I feel the attitude uh, a player should have. No. Uh, Rise, I've got to ask you a couple of stories that um, you know we've obviously got on well over the last couple of months. But the transfer season in full flow. Uh, I've got to ask you about this story. You were trying to force a move away from Liverpool at the time, and you jumped in a helicopter. This, uh, despite your, there being a no official bid, talk me through this one. 
Well, actually, it was was the the, the other way around. Uh, um, at that time, Liverpool tried to force a last minute uh, uh, transfer on me. I didn't necessarily want to go, um, but um, Liverpool was very keen on signing uh, Carlton Cole, who was at that time uh, West Ham United. Um, and uh, yeah, it was very, it was very, uh, it, w- it was going to be a very shock move. I remember I was in bed and we had a day off. On, on that particular day and and all of a sudden I got called out of my bed like hey you know get packing you you you're going to London because we're going to make a swap deal with Carlton Cole and and you know me calling my manager like are we going to do this and he's like I spoke to them it will be a loan deal for it for a season so I was like okay cool and um since there were at that time I don't know if it's still the same but the deadline day was at 6 p.m. uh at that at that day yeah and we had like uh, I think like five hours left or something. It was like a little bit afternoon, you know, one o'clock. So they told me to come to the airport, and then you know, uh, while I entered the airport, I see like this little mini helicopter that like literally two people fit in. And I was like, "Are we, are we going to London in, in that little thing?" You know. And um, uh, I flew in the helicopter with the sports director. Forgot his name. Um, and um yeah you know in in the helicopter like it was one of the worst uh experiences because we had the whole journey we had the turbulence and and i don't really like flying people who know me they know i'm scared but that that turbulence was really was really shocking and and when we arrived i was like half wet from all the sweat and everything and um there was a car um uh, you know waiting for us and then while we we're in the car he was explaining me the deal he was like so yeah you know um you're going to sign a five-year contract, you know, um, we are going to make a swap deal. Um, it's a permanent deal. And then I was like, wait a minute, I thought it was going to be a loan deal. No way. Like, no, it will be a swap deal. And then, so me calling my manager, my agent back, it's like, hey, they're telling me to sign five years. He was like, no, 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 put me on the phone with him. So then apparently there was a misunderstanding. And then I guess West Ham was expecting to sign me five years. Mm-hmm. Everyone was expecting that. And obviously we didn't want that. Um, so the deal fell off. And then, uh, funny enough, you know, they 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 instead of flying back with a helicopter, they dropped me at a train station and be like, "Yeah, go back to Liverpool with a train." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, that was a uh, quite quite an experience. Yeah. Well, we got we got to go to a break, I think, in a minute. <laughs> yeah. But Ryan, I'm going to ask you afterwards. Um, you've had you've had a great career, and you're still playing. And I just want to hear some of the highlights of your career. Yeah, you know, I mean. Um, if you look at my career, um, um, I feel like you know, especially in England, uh, I feel like the ma- the majority of fans uh, would would definitely say you know I didn't hundred percent fulfill my potential. I think uh, I can I can definitely agree to that. Um, obviously, you know, it was not only um, my own uh, mistake uh, of maybe not necessarily putting in everything i think it also is a matter of guidance especially if you look at today young young talent who mm-hmm. have good managers i feel like in my time managers um didn't really take out the time to really work with with talent and and i was kind of on my own i had to figure it out you know i was 20 when i joined liverpool which is a you know very big move from coming from holland and yeah you know if if the guidance and and, and um uh, and, and the whole total picture is not is not uh, you know in the right place. Then yeah, you know not every player is is, is set to to be successful. And I was one of those players, you know. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of ups and downs, especially in my uh, yeah spell at Liverpool. I had good moments, I had bad moments. But yeah, the consistency was was lacking, obviously, you know. Um, but um, overall, in my career, I feel like I had a good experience. I learned a lot. Um, obviously, I was part of World Cup 2010. I didn't play that particular game, unfortunately, in the in the final. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've I been all over, you know. Did um, you play in the Champions League final? I was not in the Champions League final. I was no. in the Champions League half final. Uh, oh, the semi. Got, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, by Chelsea. Rise, you've done an incredible uh, job. You, you, your career's been amazing. We we got really close over in LA when we done this show, and I, I can say you're a top top bloke, and you're still fit, mate. You're still playing, so get out, get yourself back to pre season. I know you got a, you, you're on tour at the moment, so get yourself get your boots back on. It's a construction worker. <laughs> yeah man thank you cheers <laughs> talk sport breakfast waking you up monday to friday morning from 6 a.m on a.m on dab via the talk sport app and on your smart speaker talk sport